You know, when I was a kid, you could only dream of having something like Google Earth. You know, it's satellite imagery. I can even go back on past addresses that I used to live at and see satellite imagery of my car park there all those years ago. It's amazing stuff. And people on the ground should do well to remember that those non-existent satellites that flat earthers say don't exist are taking damn good pictures of what you're doing on a constant basis. So I don't know how they come up with this imagery if it is the flat earth philosophy because uh, they say satellites don't exist. Don't, I don't even want to know how they come up with that bullshit. But you see down here that the image data is 2020, 31st of August. So pretty current. Satellites just go over, take a picture and yeah. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because, you know, that it is easy for people to forget when they're living on the ground that everywhere on the earth is photographed constantly. So if you think you're in the middle of the bush and you've cleared up a patch and nobody can find you because, you know, it takes someone an hour to drive in there or something like that, it only takes five seconds to have a look on Google Earth. Uh, yeah. That's a little bit of a drawback if you're trying to hide something big, isn't it? When you know that the whole Earth is being regularly photographed. All the activity of all human beings is being photographed from the air. So what you do to the land shows up as a scar, shows up as a photograph, shows up. Now I'm bringing all this up because um, it was raised with me that um, like I had said yesterday to focus on 3222 because that's where all the activity is going but then there was still in the back of my mind no there's this activity I've heard about going up to where Dolph is uh, you know lots of trucks and stuff like that and it's like what are they doing up there we know that there's no current DAs in for any of these properties so there's no <laughs> known approval for what they're doing so what is going on so I just went in and started to have a look and that's when I discovered this here see this uh, area here looks a bit like an open cut with uh, buildings in the bottom of it but that's actually the top of the hill it's going down the hill, it's going down the hill to this has all been bared up. There's constructions of two things there, slots for another one, two, three, four. There's a dam, little dam there. These buildings here have been constructed and there were a few things here but nowhere near as many. So let's have a look at the historical view and see what it looked like uh, some of these images aren't good so I'll go back to here so this is only a year ago as you can see this is completely different here there might be a little structure there but there's nothing there there's nothing there either and if you go back further it's even less Oh, I haven't gone back far enough. I think it was back to 2017. Well, <laughs> cloud cover. Good picture. That comes from your <laughs> flat earth non-existent satellites. <laughs> okay, so we're back to 2016. This is what it looked like. It's got a fair few amount of trees on it. There might be a little structure there. I don't know. There looks a little something there. That could be a down tree. Um but essentially it's just bush as you would expect to find it not as that that has gone on without any approval from council that can be found on their website you search for any DAs for any of these property addresses you can't find anything 
Now this is actually 2956 Kyogle Road. And I know that because after I found it, it's like, well, I don't actually know which lot that's attached to. So I did a bit of hunting myself. Hang on a sec. So this is the um, planet document that shows the ownership and the structure of the land. So I didn't know which lot in here, but uh, where I looked at it from in comparison to what was on Google Earth, it turned out to be this little purple lot. And like finding a jigsaw puzzle, you know, these are just like pieces that go into a jigsaw puzzle. You look for a certain shape, there's that spot of land. And if you go to um, the council's website, I'll just bring that up. I'll just before I do click that off so you can see, I'll open that up because um, that takes us to another area where it gives us report. If you click on that link, it takes you back to this same page. I don't even know why they've got it there, but it's there. So click that off. So you can see that here, there's all the little jigsaw puzzle pieces. And if you zoom in on the council, oops, sorry, wrong bit. You zoom in on the council image, their image is really old. I, they clearly do not use active Google Earth satellite feed. This is clearly old imagery, at least back to 2016 when we could see that. 2019 it had already started to be cleared through here. There's, right now there's a road that goes down through there and over here is the um, things that they've, I don't know, are they sheds, greenhouses, hothouses, I don't know. They're very long big sheds and up here that's all been cleared all these buildings and there's been buildings put in there so none of this is actually showing up on their imagery but the reason that I opened that link is because I have a hard time getting it back if I open it uh, shut it and it leads to this which says yeah be redirected I was going to do this again. Hang on. Yeah, the page gets a bit glitchy. It um, doesn't bring up the map and it won't bring up anything. So 2956 Kyogle Road. Put that in. It brings this up. Yeah, it's not very pretty or anything, but see all these little categories it brings up over here? These are all the zoning restrictions and everything on it. This little button over here that says generate property report, I've done that for all the properties involved. Let me just show you those ones. This is the property report for 2956, the one that we were just looking at. It's under drinking water catchment. Okay, drinking water catchment. Now, we're going to be focusing on that. 2924, drinking water catchment. 2984, drinking water catchment, water storage facilities. 3222, Kyogle Road, drinking water catchment, water storage facilities. So you can see here from all of those property reports, of all the properties involved in the development they are all under drinking water catchment. But with more restrictions on them is 3222 and 2984 because they also have water storage facilities. So in other words, dams or whatever on them. So that will have more restriction on the drinking water catchment requirements, not less. So all of the properties involved with the NICAP on Minjimbul cannot be built on because of drinking water catchment. And approval to do anything on any of these properties is limited because of that drinking water catchment. These activities that are gone on here, what do you think that's doing to the water catchment? 
Now, it was pointed out to me, and it is um, true too, that, see, this is um, Birrell Creek Road over here because of Birrell Creek. But there's also, I can't even think of the name of it, um, this big long river that creek that goes, you know, I used to, I've sat by it plenty of times at Ukai, or maybe it feeds off from um, Birrell Creek, I, I don't know. But there is the creek that goes past here. You can see it winding, follow the tree line. So essentially, even on uh, the council uh, one, it's actually marked that this whole area here is bordering on the creek. And uh, so it's catching water catchment on that side for can someone tell me the name of the damn creek I've forgotten it <laughs> but it's not the Birrell Creek one because that's on the other side over here so essentially this whole development is affecting drinking water catchment that's going into two different creeks two different uh, water um, sources that run into water catchment areas <laughs> didn't say that very well did I hang on so it's a huge problem from the perspective of the broader larger community and all people in it that one of the major catchment areas is coming under attack from so much unauthorized damage and you see, the thing is that I suppose that as, you know, a lot of these people were born back in the day when we didn't have satellite digi digital imagery. We didn't even have the internet or mobile phones. You know, you, had, you were stuck to a, a landline and snail mail. And if you wanted to look something up, you couldn't go onto the internet and look it up. You had to send letters and hope that somebody would actually do it if you paid them to do it. There is so much information available to people. You could call it the information overload of uh, the, well, the, the generation that's grown up with it would not understand just how much it has developed in such a short period of time. But you can get complacent when you're walking down on, on the land in the bush and you feel connected you think that you're all alone but you're not you've got all these satellites there's thousands of them constantly you know watching in one spot or another taking pictures and what really disturbs me is that you this whole area here from really all the tree line up around here and take all of that into consideration so much of it has been scarred up. Why is the land brown and dead looking there? What has gone on? Why is it not green? You know, uh, I just don't understand it. I mean, this whole area here where they've built, uh, you know, in the nightcap on Minjimble, they show the dam and they take that um, Danny McManus there as a prospective buyer. He's just another wannabe, I reckon, if he brings in people. He'll get a freebie too. There's been stuff going on here. They're clearing that. There's all this stuff over here that's been cleared. And, well, it was built on over here previously. This is all stuff that the council got them to pull down in uh, previous actions that they took against them because they would not listen and they just think, yeah, this is my land, my rules, and I'll do whatever I want. And yes, they will not only do whatever they want to the land, but they will do whatever they want to other people. And if you don't like it, they'll take your money and kick you out and say, good luck trying to get that back. We're just going to keep you tied up in court with endless litigation because, you know, we've got AB, <laughs> king of the fuck you over people at our top of our little gang you know I'm only looking at an aerial view and a, a view that would not be seen from if you're driving down the road uh, the main road here the Kyogre Road 
You're not going to see any of that. That's back up behind the hills where nobody can see it. This is done out of sight and supposed to be out of anybody else's mind. Just for one little flaw in that, satellite imagery. <laughs> yeah. Can't get away with too much. Well, unless uh, the council relies on their images, you'll get away with it. But if they use Google Earth's updated satellite imagery and they have a look for themselves and then they go, hmm, and then they come out there and they go, we don't have any approval for this. They know exactly where it is, know where to go, and what they're looking for. What is all this, and this, and this? This is all new. This little shed was here, but if you also notice, these are new. There's also new places over here, but I don't know, I wasn't looking at that. That sort of looks more like, um, yeah, I wasn't focusing on that. Didn't, that, anything that might be added to that didn't seem to justify a lot of um, what would essentially be construction trucks. You know, you have trucks, lorries that are going up there for one reason or another, either to load or unload soil. So what's going on? What's all this heavy machinery going up the back into uh, this pristine, well, once pristine wilderness? Actually, you can see here just how much this pristine wilderness has been destroyed by, look at all the waves of the regrowth trees. They're almost like swirls in a fingerprint, aren't they? That is not natural. And the whole thing that they talk about in uh, the NICAP on Minjimbul is that to actually replace all of this with natural forest. Well, the thing is that, you know, uh, in Tasmania, I've seen countless forestry come in, strip away these growth forests, fence off an area and put in the regrowth gums. Uh, not the pines, they're regrowing the land and they fence it off to protect the regrowth so that the wildlife doesn't come in, the kangaroos, the possums and everything, and destroy the regrowth. So they fence it off, monitor it, rebuild, restore. This is something that could be done there. In small pockets at a time, remove all that that is, well, Fake, laying its fingerprint of man upon the land. That is like the swirl of a fingerprint of man, isn't it? Remove that. Don't know about this little construction over here, but if you go not far over from where all this has been going on, this is where they came in on their nightcap on Minjimbo and they did their, you know, that Danny clapped his hands and did the echo and... They do their sales spill and then they talk about, oh, this is wonderful, blah, blah. Yeah, look at how wonderful it is, what they've done to the land there. They just keep stripping it back further and further. Now, they also claim that these trees, these plantation trees, are worth millions and millions of dollars. So I know people that have lived a whole lifetime out of clearing land and selling the timber. All they'd need to do to bring themselves up to date with any debts to pay anybody they owe is to clear this land as they said was their obligation in the Nightcap on Minjimbal documentary where they said that it was part of the conditions that uh, they get rid of these trees. I didn't know how they explained that, but uh, yeah, that's their version of saying we have to get rid of all these trees, we have to make all this money out of selling the timber off them because the council wanted us to do it and restore it to bush. Well, I haven't seen anything that they have restored. I have seen plenty of things that they are destroying more of. They have, 
that was green. That 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 hill there had trees on it. And that was green and that used to be green. Now that looks like it's bared up soil. That kind of looks like the chocolatey bare volcanic soil. Same with down over through here. Now it's also interesting to note when you look at the council plan this area here is on an EP which I don't know what EP stands for but obviously an environmental plan and because it's distinct from this other part of the lot I dare say it's like an easement where they're saying right that particular part there you can't even look at doing anything on. Now as I said there was already um, I think there was already just one structure that one little one that had trees all around it and you could barely see it hang on all right I'm going to uh, finish it up there and just uh, I wanted to bring to people's attention the water catchment issue is not only for three triple two it is for the whole development but three triple two and two eight four have got water storage facilities and would be even more valuable so this report is as I said that comes from clicking on this button and that's what that report will tell you anyone can do this you can go there and find out for yourself now there would have to be some really you know out there conspiracy theories that would have to come into play to say that the council is hiding all this approval and making up all this information that it's not true it's true the whole development is under water catchment it, drinking water okay what people drink they are very fussy about what you do on things where well they know they're going to end up drinking the water do you think they want to drink stuff that people have polluted because they haven't done the right thing there are reasons that councils lay down terms and conditions to landowners it's for everybody's benefit but these ones up at NICAP or Mingible think that they're it on the hit on the king of the hill you know that they don't have to abide by other people's laws because they're sovereign they make up their own laws well no you can't make up your own laws you can try but <laughs> you're not going to get very far maybe that's why so many of Mark McMurky's cases have been thrown out of court because he tries over and over with his bullshit <laughs> he just hasn't got it yet you're barking up the wrong tree you think you know what you're talking about but you're full of shit they're all full of shit they're selling something <laughs> they can't give you you cannot build on it you can't do anything on it and they well what did they do the last video I left a thumbnail showing AB and McMurky outside the uh, three triple two after the auction it occurred earlier this year when Wollumbin Horizons the one that AB stuck into uh, voluntary administration as we heard in the Vox in the fire sale and they're pulling the sign down saying we got it back did they did they get it back um how because if they got it back that's illegal phoenixing and with the vox the previous vox of him confessing that it was done deliberately and the fact that he's <laughs> we are literally in administration with the first development and we're selling the second one on stage 
We, we, we are all the same people. Mr. Adrian Brannock perjured himself in court when he said that they had nothing to do with each other. And he's confessed, just like everybody knew, they're all the same people. And yes, words out of his own mouth now. Definitely the same people. The only one that's not there, still at the forefront anymore, is Mark Darwin. He's just more in the background. So, and the interesting thing is too, I came onto a website last night where I was able to access, it looks like Mark McMurtry and his, I don't know, his previous wife, Rosemary Elizabeth, um, they were in court back and forth with these other people and each one tried bankrupting the other and got it uh, thrown out of court. And it looks like someone tried bankrupting Mark Darwin and they didn't succeed. But it looks like the person that tried bankrupting Adrian Brennock succeeded. Maybe that's because it was the Australian Taxation Office and not just some other individual or company trying to bankrupt that individual. So um, out of all of them, Mark Darwin has attempted, someone's attempted to bankrupt him. Uh, Mark McMurtry's, someone's attempted to bankrupt him and he's attempted to bankrupt others. But AB failed. For all his King of the Hill shit that he reckons he's the best of the best, he was the only one that actually got done and bankrupted. So that makes him the dumbest of the three, not the smartest. Anyway, on that note, I'm going to leave because I'm getting a rest here. <laughs> Catch you later. Bye.